Hello guys, welcome to the machine design world. This is Kewal Patil and today we are going to see design of spring. So this is the second part of introduction of springs. In first part, we have done with types of spring, definition of spring, application, terminology and types of end. In this lecture, we will see stresses in helical spring, shear stress concentration factor, wall con walls concentration factor and Okay guys, let's start with stresses in helical spring. Here we have one axially loaded helical compression spring. So, P is a axial force on the spring. D is a mean coil dia. Small d is a wire dia. And we know the spring index. It is nothing but d by d. So now this spring, because of this spring, because of this load, this spring will be getting compressed and or it will changes length okay it will be there will be reduction in length of the spring but while compressing this wire turns like actually it turns like this okay it turns like this its length is decreasing but also it is turning like this and whenever whenever any circular any circular thing or anything turns there is torque okay so torque while compression or while there is a deflection in compression spring or any spring there will be a torque okay so see this torque is acting on this spring and there will be direct shear load because of directly breaking of this uh, coils okay there will be one direct shear load the direct shear load will be force upon area of the spring and second stress is this top uh, stress due to this torque that is torsional shear stress so there are two main stresses acting in the helical spring first one is direct stress because of this load p and second one is torsional shear stress because of this torque this is free body diagram all right let's move to the derivation part so first one is direct shear stress tau d so tau d is equal to force which is acting on cross section area of this spring it is nothing but p upon pi by 4 d square that is diameter of the wire okay so it is simple now i can i can write this like 4 p upon pi d square so second stress is torsional shear stress Okay. so I am doing torsional shear stress okay now uh, we know the formula we know the formula I am just writing the formula over here T by J is equal to tau by R okay is equal to G theta by L I am going to use this alright so first of all what is this J J is called as polar moment of inertia J is called as Polar moment of inertia, it is nothing but Ixx plus Iyy. What is this? Ixx plus Iyy. If you have learned the perpendicular axis theorem in mechanics, then this formula comes from perpendicular axis theorem. Polar moment of inertia is nothing but inert moment of inertia about xx axis plus moment of inertia about yy axis. Okay, so it, it is pi by 64 d raised to 4 plus pi by 64 d raised to 4 it comes pi by 32 d raised to 4 okay now what is this torque this torque is nothing but this torque at this point will be force into distance okay so at this point we want to calculate the torque so force into distance what is this distance we know this is capital d so capital d by 2 so torque will be force into d by 2 now we know from this so tau is equal to tj into r tj into r so t is nothing but p into d by 2 so p into d by 2 into d by 2 divided by j j is pi by 32 t raised to 4 so from here you will get so this is 4 it will become 8 so 8 force mean coil diameter upon pi d q so this is tau s okay so now at this point at this point two stresses are acting first is direct shear stress and second is torsional shear stress they are acting or they are having same angle 
same line of action same line of action they are not having any angle in between them so according to vector addition we can directly add them so so total stress will be total shear stress also called as resultant shear stress total shear stress will be tau is equal to tau d plus tau s okay so it is nothing but 4p upon pi d square plus 8p d upon pi d q now what is common i am removing the common out 8p d so this is capital d i think capital d 8p d I am just removing this 8pd and pi d cube common. So what will be remaining here? It will be small d upon 2d plus 1. Okay. I am just removing. I just want all these term out of the bracket. Okay. So I am just removing all out or just dividing both the part with 8pd upon pi d cube. Okay. Just dividing both the term with this. So what we will have a down? We will have this is 4 and 2 gone so d upon 2d plus this and this whole gone 1 ok just see 4p upon pi d square pi pi gone ok pi and pi gone d cube there so d cube and d square gone remaining d this side and 8pd there so 4 in uh, 4 4 ones are 4 4 2 are 8 so 2 remaining pp gone remaining is t so this is one equation this is equation for tau so now what I did, I am just rewriting, uh, reposition this term. Now, what is 1 by 2? It is 0 0.5. So, I can write this as 8pd upon pi d cube bracket 1 plus 0 0.5 small d upon capital D. Y dia upon coil dia. Okay. Now, what is d by d? It is nothing but capital D by small d is nothing but spring index c okay so we'll call it 8 pd upon pi d cube 1 plus 0 0.5 divided by c so tau so we got the value of tau is equal to 8 pd pi d uh, divided by pi d cube into bracket 1 plus 0 0.5 divided by c now this term this term this term is known as shear stress factor okay this term is known as shear stress factor so tau is equal to k as such into 8 pd upon pi d q okay so this i'm writing like this where k as such is equal to shear stress factor shear stress factor and is equal to 1 plus 0 0.5 upon c so ksh is equal to 1 plus so these two terms we have to remember okay actually it is given in psg it is given in psg psg 7.100 7.10 it is already given now what is this ksg actually it is one factor which depends upon the loading condition first is we should use this ksh whenever there is static loading condition okay when we should use it when we have a static loading condition and this ksh takes in account direct shear stress and torsional shear stress because this tau is effect of direct shear stress and torsional shear stress so this ksh takes in account this two shear two stresses direct shear stress and torsional shear stress but but there is one more effect which is known as curvature effect which is neglected in this formula so we have to consider that curvature effects so there is one more term called as wall concentration factor it's come in picture so if you want to take curvature effect in account then you have to replace this ks with wall stress concentration factor called as ks okay so now wall shear stress concentration factor or shear stress factor and it is given by 
के एस इज इक्वल टू के सी माइनस वन अपॉन के सी माइनस फोर प्लस जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स वन फाइव अपॉन सी अगेन इट इज इन पी एच जी सेवन पॉइंट वन जीरो जीरो इट इज गिवन इन पी एच जी सेवन पॉइंट वन जीरो जीरो सो फर्स्ट सो वेन वी हैव स्टैटिक लोडिंग कंडीशन ओके और द स्प्रिंग इज सब्जेक्टेड टू स्टैटिक लोडिंग वायर कर्वेचर मे बी निग्लेक्टेड ओके सो इफ वी निग्लेक्टिंग वायर कर्वेचर देन वी कैन कंसिडर के एस एच स्ट्रेस फैक्टर बट इन एक्चुअल कंडीशन वॉट हैपन्स देर इज स्प्रिंग्स आर कर्व्ड एंड इफेक्ट ऑफ कर्वेचर इन टेकन इन टू अकाउंट ओके लाइक इन फटिक लोडिंग ओके सो इन दैट केस वी हैव टू यूज वॉल शेयर स्ट्रेस फैक्टर सो टू थिंग्स यू हैव टू कीप इन माइंड फर्स्ट वेन टू यूज केयर्स इन केयर्स एच ऑनली डायरेक्ट शेयर स्ट्रेस टाउ डी एंड टाउ टॉजनल ऑनली टू थिंग्स आर कंसिडर हेयर टाउ डी टाउ एस दैट इज डायरेक्ट शेयर स्ट्रेस टॉजनल शेयर स्ट्रेस प्लस कर्वेचर इफेक्ट curvature wire curvature curvature of wire okay and it is used in static loading condition and it is used in fatigue loading condition okay these two things you have to keep remember about okay so see this case value this case value that is wall stress concentration factor it's same as case h same as case h both are same these both term are same only difference is it is having extra factor as curvature factor. Curvature wire. So we can say that K S is equal to K S H plus curvature wire or curvature factor. So K S is equal to K S H plus K C. Just you have to remember this. Okay, just remember this. K S that is wall concentration factor is shear stress mass shear stress factor plus curvature factor. Okay, this. Okay, now we having K S is. फोर सी माइनस वन अपॉन फोर सी माइनस फोर प्लस जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स वन फोर अपॉन सी वे स्प्री इज सी इज अ स्प्रिंग इन डे सो फ्रॉम दिस वी कैन से टाउ इज इक्वल टू के एस ब्रैकेट एट पी डी अपॉन पाई डी क्यूब ओके फ्रॉम दिस जस्ट रिप्लेस के एस एच विथ के एस ओके सो दिस इज द रिक्वायर्ड फॉर्मूला सो दिस फॉर्मूला वी गोइंग टू यूज फॉर सॉल्विंग problems and it is given in prg 7.100 okay 7.100 now the last topic of today's video it is factor of safety for spring okay now see for spring we usually consider low factor of safety between 1.5 to 2 why so first i am writing the factor of safety value that is from 1.5 to 2. Usually they take 1.5 only. So just consider 1.5 to 2. So first thing is, in most of the application, in most of the application, spring is ha having well defined deflections. Means the deflection of springs are defined already. Okay. Therefore, the force acting on the spring and corresponding stresses can be precisely calculated. We will means we know we are having the spring, we are having the spring, okay, some spring like this, okay, and it is going to deflect only this much. So, if we know the deflection, then we can find the forces or stresses on the spring. So, we know precisely if we knowing the forces, then, okay. So that's why the factor of safety should be less. Second point is. In helical compression spring, okay, helical compression spring, spring going to compress, right? Spring going to compress, right? So it is simply going to close the gap. Simply going to close the gap. So we don't need, or we can say there is a, there is no damage, okay? How it can damage? So there is no damage of the spring. And in tension spring, in tension spring, like I said, in tension spring. Like I said, in tension spring, like this, we are having some tension spring. Okay, like this, we are having some tension spring. So in this case, the maximum deflection for maximum deflection stoppers are provided. Stoppers are provided for maximum de deflection. So it won't exceed this predetermined value. If it is not exceeding the predetermined value, then why we need high factor of safety? So just keep in mind that. 
for factor of safety of spring we usually consider it 1.5 to 2 okay so this is the last topic of today's video so what all we cover today that is stresses in helical spring shear stress concentration factor wall shear stress factor then factor of safety in next video we'll start with the master problem of spring design okay it will contain all the parameter which will be asked in the question paper okay thank you for watching the video if you have any query please ask in comment like and share thank you